This morning on CBS 2 News, the suspect in the Illinois parade shooting makes his first court appearance. The new information investigators say they've uncovered about the tragedy and what they're still trying to figure out. Plus, could the shooting at an elementary school in Texas have been prevented? What one new report is now uncovering. And the Middleton police chief hands in his resignation. Why neighbors are having a tough time understanding the sudden situation. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look of downtown Boise on this Thursday, July 7th, 2022. Yeah, very quiet night out there this morning and mild as well, but it is going to heat up. Finally, some triple digit temperatures are in the forecast. The good news, though, not for a while. Let's bring in Marcos Guadarrama. Good morning, Marcos. Well, good morning, Sarah. It is a nice mild morning out there. Uh, here's a live look right now downtown. Calm winds out there, 66. And as Sarah said, it is going to be getting into the triple digits next week. So we have a couple days to sort of enjoy the uh, war, uh, not so warm temperatures. So here's a look right now at some of our current temperatures. 66 here at Boise, 70 there in Nampa, 64 out in Mountain Home. And here's a look at your out the door forecast for those of you starting out your morning. Uh, 80 degrees by 11 a.m., 87 by 1 p.m., and getting into the 90s by 3 p.m. It is going to be another warm day, folks. Taking a quick look at our almanac, uh, normal 91 degrees for this time of year. We're going to be getting into the uh, uh, 94 degrees for this afternoon. And here's a look at some of our high temperatures across the valley. 96 there, Mountain Home, 90 Idaho City, 95 there, Boise, and Caldwell there at 96 degrees. So nice warm temperatures for this afternoon, and I expect those triple digits next week. Sarah? Thank you, Marcos. 501 on your Thursday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring a team traffic all morning long. A few more headlights out there than normally this morning, but everything is looking good, running smoothly. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, the authorities, they say the suspect in the mass shooting that killed seven at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois, he's confessed to the attack. Now, the weapon left behind, it actually helped police capture the suspect just hours later. Now, after the rampage, police say the shooter drove to Madison, Wisconsin and contemplated firing on an event there. Now, Highland Park Police Chief Lou Jogman told CBS News that investigators still don't have a motive. We really don't have any better understanding today than we did uh, when we first started talking to him about the why in particular. The 21 year old appeared in court for the first time by video on Wednesday. He faces seven counts of first degree murder with dozens more charges are expected to come through. Now, if convicted, prosecutors say he could spend the rest of his life in prison. Well, officers in Richmond, Virginia say a similar scene. It could have played out there. Now they say two men had a cache of weapons inside a home and were planning a mass shooting on Independence Day. However, that plot was thwarted thanks to a call from a concerned citizen who says they overheard the men. One phone call saved numerous lives on the 4th of July. And moving forward, we employ that everyone, if you see something, say something. Police, they seized two assault rifles, one handgun, and 223 rounds of ammunition. Now, both men are charged with possession of weapons by undocumented immigrants. The Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented. That's the finding of a scorching new assessment from an active shooter training center. Now, the report doesn't name names, but the Uvalde mayor is doing just that. He's not blaming any one member of law enforcement for that botched response. But as Amy Kiley reports, he is accusing someone of covering up the truth. I think it's a cover up. This scathing new report claims the Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented and these 19 elementary students and two teachers could still be alive. The Uvalde mayor accuses Texas Department of Public Safety Director Stephen McCraw of concealing the truth about the shooting. It's always hard when you tell a lie. Do you have to keep telling a lie? I'm not saying he's lying. Maybe he was misled. 
The new assessment is from an active shooter training center. It highlights three missed opportunities to prevent the tragedy. One, it suggests the school was lax about locking doors. Two, it says a school police officer drove too quickly through the parking lot to notice the gunman. Point three is the most striking. It says a Uvalde police officer who likely heard gunshots or reports of them saw the gunman before he entered the school. He asked permission to shoot but didn't get a response in time. I was waiting for um, anybody, anybody to come save us. As for what happened inside the building, the report blames a lack of effective command. It says that contributed to the failure to stop the gunman in time. Nobody moved but me. The children were dead under the table. Yeah, my children. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The report, though, doesn't name McCraw. And McCraw himself has blamed the school district police chief for failures around that shooting. Now, the center, it does plan to issue a second part of that report. Now, that will assess the leadership behind the law enforcement response. Well, switching gears, a curfew lifted overnight in Akron, Ohio, following days of protest after a police shot and killed an unarmed black man during a foot chase last week. Now, a medical examiner says 25 year old Jalen Walker had about 60 bullet wounds on his body. Eight police officers are now on paid administrative leave. Well, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin will be sentenced later today to 20 to 25 years in federal prison for violating George Floyd's civil rights. Now, it's all part of a plea deal after Floyd died in police custody back in May of 2020. Now, Chauvin is already serving a 22 and a half year sentence for his conviction on state charges. Well, closer to home here in the Gem State, the Middleton City Council accepted the resignation of Police Chief Alan Takuchi. Now, the mayor had already requested a city council meeting on dismissing the chief, but before that could happen, he handed in his resignation. Now, it still isn't clear why the mayor wanted the chief out. Yes. 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 Motion Without public discussion, the council accepted the chief's resignation. Mayor Steve Rule apparently got what he Now another oddity, the Middleton Police Department Facebook page, it's now gone. CBS2 reached out to the mayor for comment yesterday, but all he said was he was sad to receive his resignation. Now we also reached out to city councilors to find out what's next for the police department, but have yet to hear back. Well, a measure that would increase taxes for the top 1% of Idahoans to fund Idaho grade schools, it's now one step closer to the November ballot. Now, the Quality Education Act would increase K-12 funding by about $323 million. Teachers, students, and other public education advocates, they handed in over 100,000 signatures to the Secretary of State's office, all as part of yesterday's rally. Now, the Idaho State Board of Education says in the meantime, they're in an unprecedented teaching hiring crisis with roughly 700 unfilled public K through 12 teaching positions heading into the next school year. A lot of districts aren't even getting applications because we're not paying competitive salaries. What is going to happen? Are they going to put 50 kids in a classroom? I don't know. Now, Idaho, it ranks dead last when it comes to funding per child in public K through 12 schools. Now, the Idaho Secretary of State has 10 days to certify those signatures before the initiative can be placed on the November ballot. And looking ahead, the Idaho Patriot Thunder Ride, it'll be rolling through the Treasure Valley on Sunday. Organizers had to postpone the event about two times last month due to unsettled weather. And a heads up, if you are going to be out on the roads, about a thousand motorcyclists are expected to participate, which means you can expect some traffic along the route. Now the ride, it begins at High Desert Harley on Cinema Drive to Overland Road, then to Eagle Road. Riders will then head eastbound on I-84 to Mountain Home. Well, if you're in need of some assistance, the Boise Salvation Army, they're offering fresh produce on Friday. They say seniors in need are especially welcome. Now, they've heard how hard it is with high food prices that our seniors living on fixed incomes. They're having a hard time choosing between medications and buying groceries. Now, it'll be held at 9492 Emerald Street in Boise. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pre-registration for this produce market, it is required. You can sign up through today at 4 o'clock. Love to be able to see us 
or at least the Salvation Army helping out our community. Yeah. Nothing better than that. But one of my favorite things, honestly, about being in summertime is having all that fresh produce, that fresh yes. fruit, being able to get out and grow it, but also being able to just garden in general. Yeah. You know, and I'm you a big garden. gardener. Yeah, you, you have a nice little garden on your balcony. Right? Working on it. It's my first yeah. year attempting it. And so far, it's looking like I may have a green thumb, Marco. So. I, I, I don't think I could keep them alive. So I just... I it's okay. I, I think it comes with age. I yes. know that when I started in my early 20s, yeah, there was no hope for my plants. Yes. But luckily, as we're getting older, we're getting smarter. And yes. that's, I think we can all <laughs> agree with that. But like one that. smart thing you should do today, sunscreen, if you are yeah. going to be out enjoying the sun. It is going to be another toasty day. Another, uh, yeah, another uh, high temperatures getting a degree warmer for today once again. Uh, uh, we're going to be getting into the, the mid-90s in the valley. Uh, here's a live look right now. This is a beautiful shot of our Idaho mountains right now. Now, the mountain region may see some isolated thunderstorms uh, up until Friday, but here in the valley, a completely different story. We're going to be staying fairly dry. As Sarah said, warmer temperatures, get that sunscreen. Here's a current look at some of our temperatures across the valley right now, 70 out in Nampa, Meridian 69, and looking at other temperatures right now, 64 there, Mountain Home, nice uh, mid-60s, upper 60s temperatures for starting out your morning. Looking at the start of the day forecast, we are going to be sitting at uh, mid 60s throughout the morning for those of you commuting, getting out to the workday, starting your workday out there. And here's a look at our temperature trend. Uh, we're going to be, as I said, that mid 90 staying consistent throughout the weekend, getting a nice little break on Sunday and then getting into the upper 90s once again by Monday. We are expected to see some of those triple digits. Here's a look at some of those uh, national forecast highs. 99 out there in Salt Lake, 95 here, Boise, Idaho Falls there at 99 and Las Vegas there at 103. That may be us in about a week's time, folks. So here's a look at our uh, car wash forecast. A good day today and tomorrow to get out there, get the hose, wash that car. Hot today, hot temperatures on Friday and uh, getting uh, even warmer by Saturday. So, but uh, staying fairly dry here in the valley, uh, some mountain rain and showers, but overall going to be a warm week ahead, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Marcos. It is 511 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good out there and running smoothly. Hey, so when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, Britain's prime minister is resigning. Why the country's leader is calling it quits. Plus, gas prices going down. What state is finally seeing some relief that could signal good things to come for the rest of our country? And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. According to a relationship expert, doing this will improve your friendships. Well, it definitely wasn't what we were expecting. The answer, moving away. Sometimes distance, it does make the heart grow fonder. Now, for today's question, if you're, av if you're average, you'll eat this about 40 times this summer. Hmm. Okay, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your local forecast in Gooding for today. Sunny conditions, high of 93, mostly clear tonight with a high of 60. And tomorrow, that sunshine sticking around with a high of 95. Thank you, Marcos. 515 on your Thursday. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is agreeing to resign, ending an unprecedented stalemate. It's been going on for a while. Now, Johnson was pushing against calls by his cabinet to step down in the wake of several ethics scandals. However, after more than 40 members of his government resigned, he now has agreed to leave. Today, I ask him to do the honorable thing, to put the interests of the nation before his yeah. own interests. He'll continue to serve as the prime minister through autumn. That's according to the report. Now, Johnson's conservative party plans to have a new leader in place by the party's October conference. That's according to the BBC. Now, turning to the war in Ukraine, Ukrainian officials in part of the Donbas region, they're urging residents to evacuate as Russia's attack continues. Ukrainian officials say people in the Donetsk region, one of the two regions that makes up the Donbas, should evacuate to safer locations. Now, officials say Russia's invasion has turned the region into a dangerous hotspot. Now, Ukraine says it still controls about 45% of the Donetsk region. 
Well, back here at home, the Federal Reserve signaling more interest rate hikes are on the horizon. Now, minutes from the Fed's mid-June meeting indicate significantly higher rates could be needed to rein in spiraling inflation. Now, at the same time, the central bank did acknowledge rate hikes could weaken the economy. After last month's meeting, the Fed raised its key rate by three quarters of a percentage point. Now, that was the biggest single increase in almost three decades. Well, in the meantime, gas prices are continuing their downward trend for the first time in a long time. Gas prices finally going down in California. The state had the highest average across the U.S., but this morning they're down 10 cents from a week ago. That's 619 a gallon. Of course, for many, that's still too much. You shouldn't have to be at the gas pump questioning your life decisions. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to put $20 in or are you going to be able to get lunch? Yeah, the hope is that the downward trend will continue. Now, according to a spokesperson for Gas Buddy, as long as oil prices don't reverse back, this could continue for two to three more weeks. Meanwhile, here in Idaho, we aren't seeing much movement. Gas still at 524 a gallon, down just one cent from a week ago. We're still sitting at about 49 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will be Costco. It lists Meridian, Napa, and Boise locations at $5.15 a gallon. Some high guy gas prices there, Sarah. Yep. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you have that membership to Costco, yes. it is definitely worth it, even waiting in a yes. line. So, I don't know. It's, we're just trying to do the best we can yeah. with what we have at this point. I liked her, her thought, you know, quite, uh, Am I going to get lunch or am I going to get gas today? I'm like, well, that is the question uh, that, yeah, some people have. A lot of have. people are facing. Well, especially those on fixed income or those yeah. with lots of, you know, lots of children, lots of mouths yeah. to feed. That's who we're really thinking of right, right now. Yeah. So, also, what I'm thinking about, we're switching gears. You know, we want to feel a little bit of that uplift on Thursday morning. It's yeah. almost the weekend. We like to call this Friday Eve. This weekend, how's it looking for us? Definitely getting warmer once again. I mean, it seems like we're just getting warmer each and every day, Sarah. I mean, okay. it's going to be a good weekend to get out there, uh, you know, enjoy that uh, Idaho sunshine, the Idaho weather, hiking, uh, biking, hitting to, uh, the Boise River. Here's uh, a live look at downtown right now, 66 degrees, calm winds out there. Nice, uh, nice, good start to your morning. Uh, here's a look at some current temperatures across the valley right now. 69 there, Caldwell, 70 out in Nampa, 69 in Meridian, and uh, 44 out in Stanley, 69 there in Caldwell and Mountain Home there at 64 degrees. Now, taking a quick look at that uh, allergy, the pollen count, we're in moderate uh, right now for grass, weeds, and trees. A little uh, higher there for trees. I know a lot of people suffering with those allergies out there. Take a look at our satellite and radar. We are gonna see some instability in the mountains. We may see a thunderstorm shower in the northern mountain regions, but here in the valley, staying fairly dry, folks. Gonna be uh, mid 90s throughout the rest of the week and potentially triple digits by next week. So above normal temperatures for this weekend. Lots of sun this week, dry through the weekend and hitting 100 next week. Let's take a look at that extended forecast. 93 for today, 94 warmer on Friday, sticking in the lower 90s for the weekend before we warm up a bit Monday. There's that triple digit Tuesday and 101 Wednesday. Here's a quick look at that mountain forecast. 81 for today, Friday 81 there, staying in the 80s, upper 70s by Sunday and warming up for the rest of the week. Sarah? Oh, thank you, Marcos. I'm feeling those allergies right now as you say that. It is 520 Ooh. on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good on our main roads and secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, Idaho seeing its first case of monkeypox where the case comes from and what doctors say you need to know. Plus, St. Alphonsus offering the COVID vaccine for kids as young as six months. Why experts say it's important to keep your kids vaccinated. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 523 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Idaho may have its first case of monkeypox. The Idaho Department of Health and Welfare is looking into its first probable case. They say the person lives in the Central Health District, which serves Ada, Boise, Elmore, and Valley Counties. 
Officials, they believe the person who got infected while traveling, they got infected while traveling to a country experiencing an outbreak. Uh, we don't think right now that we have uh, an outbreak, but we are certainly uh, trying very hard to make sure this doesn't spread and that any other cases that might be in the state get quickly tested and treated. Monkeypox, it usually causes mild illness and most people do recover on their own. However, it is contagious and spreads mostly through direct contact with infectious scabs, sores or body fluids. Now symptoms, they include a rash, swollen lymph nodes and flu like symptoms. Health officials say you can do some things to prevent or help prevent infection, like washing your hands, limiting direct contact with anyone who has a new rash and staying at home. Also isolating if you develop a new rash. Now, over 6,000 cases of monkeypox have been reported just outside of Africa. Now, this includes 560 cases in the U.S. Now, none of those have resulted in death. Well, St. Alphonsus is offering COVID vaccines for kids aged six months to five years old. The FDA and CDC both unanimously say that benefits, they outweigh the risks of vaccinating. Now, community levels are high in several Idaho counties. That does include here in Ada County. Doctors say one of the ways to stop the spread is by keeping up on your vaccinations and getting your kids vaccinated. You can get the vaccine for those six months to five years old at Boise Pediatric and the pediatric centers on Garrity and Elm. Now, if you want to make an appointment, we do have a link that is on IdahoNews.com. A new study shows a drop in mammograms and other breast cancer care still remaining below pre-COVID levels. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares why that's now raising new concerns. Hey there, everybody. A recent review of breast cancer care in COVID-19 shows that delays in screening, diagnosis, and treatment could have a big impact on a patient's future if we don't turn some of these trends around. With all of that shut down, a lot of people canceled and even didn't get their mammograms later on when we reopened our services. Dr. Jennifer Manders is a breast surgeon at Ohio's Christ Hospital Health Network. She says her team already seeing the impact of what the breast cancer review also shows. People who may have had what's called a screen detected breast cancer now came in with more locally advanced disease. It's all because according to the American College of Radiology, mammography and breast cancer care related to it has not yet rebounded or bounced back from the COVID-19 pandemic. This research team estimated it's only at about 85% of what it was pre-pandemic. Dr. Manders and the team here told me what that really translates to right now is that many women didn't come in at all for breast cancer screening in the pandemic, and often it's cancer symptoms or other concerns bringing them in now. It's pretty common for us to see women who had their last mammogram in 2019. The other finding in this review is that breast cancer diagnosis dropped by nearly 50% in the peak pandemic period, and that has not rebounded either. That's raising new concerns that a lot of new cancers have yet to be diagnosed. One of the things to note is if you can get your initial screening done, follow up consults can still be done virtually and that can help with scheduling and quick turnaround. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News, rallying for teachers in Idaho. The measure you may see on the November ballot after getting over 100,000 signatures. And here's what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. Join us for all of your favorites and don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the suspect in the Illinois parade shooting makes his first court appearance. The new information investigators say they've uncovered about the tragedy and what they're still trying to figure out. Plus, could the shooting at an elementary school in Texas have been prevented? What one new report is now uncovering. And the Middleton police chief hands in his resignation. Why neighbors are having a tough time understanding the sudden situation. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now.
And we have a nice mild start to your Thursday morning. Right now, 66 degrees. Here's our live shot. Calm winds out there. We are going to be warming up this afternoon once again. Highs are going to be in the mid 90s, but let's take a look at some current temperatures across the valley. 70 out in Nampa, Mountain Home there, 64, and of course, Boise there at 66 degrees. Taking a look at that out the door forecast for those of you starting your morning. 72 by 9 a.m., getting into the 80s by 11, and getting into the 90s by 3 p.m. We are expected to get into 94, 95 degrees for this afternoon. Normal for this time of year there, 90 degrees, normal low 60. So we are going to be about three degrees warmer than uh, what's considered normal for this time of year. Here's a look at that uh, high 94 degrees, lots of sunshine this morning and looking at some high temperatures across the valley. 90 there in Idaho City, 95 Boise, Caldwell there at 96, Emmett at 97 and Mountain Home there at 96 degrees. Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. It is 531 on your Thursday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning, seeing that first light. Everything rolling on along this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Authorities, they say the suspect in the mass shooting that killed seven at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois, confessed to the attack. Now, the weapon left behind helped police capture the suspect just hours later. Following the rampage, police say the shooter actually drove to Madison, Wisconsin, and contemplated firing on an event there. Now, Highland Park Police Chief Lou Jogman told CBS News that investigators still don't know a motive. We really don't have any better understanding today than we did uh, when we first started talking to him about the why in particular. Now, the 21 year old appeared in court for the first time by video yesterday. He faces seven counts of first degree murder with more than a dozen charges expected to still come through. Now, if convicted, prosecutors say he could spend the rest of his life in prison. Officers in Richmond, Virginia say a similar scene. It could have played out there. They say two men had a cache of weapons inside a home and were planning a mass shooting on Independence Day. However, that plan was thwarted thanks to a call from concerned citizens who said they overheard the men. One phone call saved numerous lives on the 4th of July. And moving forward, we employed that everyone, if you see something, say something. Police seized two assault rifles, one handgun, and 223 rounds of ammunition. Now, both men are charged with possession of weapons by undocumented immigrants. While in Texas, the Uvalde school shooting, it could have been prevented. That's the new finding of a scorching new assessment from an active shooter training center. Now, that report, it doesn't name names, but the Uvalde mayor is doing just that. He's not blaming any one member of law enforcement for the botched response, but as Amy Kyla reports, he is accusing someone of trying to cover up the truth. I think it's a cover up. This scathing new report claims the Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented and these 19 elementary students and two teachers could still be alive. The Uvalde mayor accuses Texas Department of Public Safety Director Stephen McCraw of concealing the truth about the shooting. It's always hard when you tell a lie, you have to keep telling a lie. I'm not saying he's lying, maybe he was misled. The new assessment is from an active shooter training center. It highlights three missed opportunities to prevent the tragedy. One, it suggests the school was lax about locking doors. Two, it says a school police officer drove too quickly through the parking lot to notice the gunman. Point three is the most striking. It says a Uvalde police officer who likely heard gunshots or reports of them saw the gunman before he entered the school. He asked permission to shoot, but didn't get a response in time. I was waiting for um, anybody, anybody to come save us. As for what happened inside the building, the report blames a lack of effective command. It says that contributed to the failure to stop the gunman in time. Nobody moved but me. The children were dead under the table. <laughs> yeah, my children. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Now, the report doesn't specifically name McCraw, and McCraw himself has blamed the school district police chief for failures around the shooting. Now, the center plans to issue a second part of this report. Now, that will assess the leadership behind the law enforcement response. 
Well, switching gears, a curfew lifted overnight in Akron, Ohio, following days of protest, following the police shooting and killing an unarmed black man during a foot chase last week. A medical examiner says 25 year old Jalen Walker had 60 bullet wounds in his body. Eight police officers are on paid administrative leave. Well, former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin will be sentenced later today to 20 to 25 years in federal prison for violating George Floyd's civil rights. It's all part of a plea deal after Floyd died in police custody back in May of 2020. Now, Chauvin is already serving a 22 and a half year sentence for his convicted conviction on state charges. Well, developing news this morning here at the Gem State, the Middleton City Council accepting the resignation of Police Chief Alan Takuchi. Now, the mayor had already requested a city council meeting on dismissing the chief, but before that could happen, he handed in his resignation yesterday. It's still unclear why the mayor wanted the chief out. A lot of the people in town uh, are uh, frustrated with the mayor and a lot of most of the people in our community highly support the chief of police, all the police. Another oddity, the Middleton Police Department Facebook page, it's now gone. CBS2 did reach out to the mayor for comment, but all he would say is that he, quote, was sad to receive his resignation. Now, we also reached out to the city council to find out what's next for the police department, but have yet to hear back. Well, a measure that would dramatically increase taxes to fund Idaho grade schools, it's one step closer to the November ballot. Now, the Quality Education Act, it would increase K-12 funding by about $323 million. Teachers, students, and other public education advocates handed over 100,000 signatures to the Secretary of State's office yesterday. The Idaho State Board of Education says they're in an unprecedented teacher hiring crisis. They have over roughly 700 unfilled public K through 12 teaching positions going into next school year. A lot of districts aren't even getting applications because we're not paying competitive salaries. What is going to happen? Are they going to put 50 kids in a classroom? I don't know. On top of this, Idaho, we rank dead last when it comes to funding per child for public K through 12 schools. Now, the Idaho Secretary of State has just 10 days to certify those signatures before the initiative can be placed on the November ballot. Well, looking ahead, the Idaho Patriot Thunder Ride, it'll be rolling through the Treasure Valley on Sunday. Organizers, they did have to postpone that event about two times due to unsettled weather last month. Just a heads up, about a thousand motorcyclists are expected to participate, which means you can expect some traffic restrictions on Sunday. The ride, it will begin at High Desert Harley Davidson, and that's on Cinema Drive, to Overland Road, then to Eagle. Then riders will head eastbound on I-84 to Mountain Home. Officers will escort riders, so again, expect some delays. Well, if you're in need of some assistance, the Boise Salvation Army, they're offering free fresh Friday produce on this Friday. They say seniors are especially welcome. Now, they've heard how hard it is with the high price of foods, and our seniors, who are of course on a fixed income, are having sometimes to choose between medication and buying groceries. Now, this will be held at 9492 Emerald Street in Boise. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pre-registration for the produce market that is required to sign up. Clients can sign up through Thursday today at 4 o'clock. Again, that sign up today at 4 o'clock. That's when it ends. You need to sign up in order to be involved. But some great things they're doing this summer. I know people need help. And I know many people, um, you know, that's that's what a lot of people look forward to is those seasons when you can finally grow your own fresh oh, fruit, yeah. your fresh, fresh produce. Fresh vegetables, all that, yeah. you know, tomatoes. So you'll have to give me some tips on uh, growing produce because I... No, I'm not. I'm not great. So. Yeah, it's my first year, so we're, we're slowly but surely. Another thing, slowly but surely, too, is these temperature warm-ups, which yes. I'm liking. It's kind of like a day-by-day -day incremental yes, warming, yeah. which I'm really enjoying. I don't know about you. Yeah, a uh, nice warm-up uh, continuing through uh, through the week, really. We're going to be seeing highs uh, in the mid-90s by this afternoon and uh, going to see that uh, potential triple digits by next week, folks. Uh, taking a quick look right now, this is uh, a look at Idaho's mountains. We are going to see some potential for thunderstorm showers out in those areas throughout the weekend, uh, throughout the next couple days, Thursday and Friday. But here in the valley, a completely different story, staying fairly
fairly dry. Those temperatures staying uh, fairly warm. And here's a look at some of our current temperatures right now. Mild conditions, 69 out in Meridian. Uh, looking at temperature 64, their mountain home, Caldwell 69, and uh, they're out in Stanley, 44 degrees. So some nice mild uh, morning temperatures. Here's a look at that uh, starting your day forecast. Mild temperatures in the 60s for this morning. We are going to be getting into the 80s as the morning progresses, but for now, nice 60s. Looking at our temperature trends, uh, 96 for today. That mid 90 for the rest of the week, a nice little uh, break on Sunday before we get even cooler on Monday afternoon. Here's a look at some of our forecast highs throughout uh, this, the country. Now 88 there, Reno, Sacramento there, 92. So nice 90 degree heat throughout the country. And uh, if you're thinking about going out for a uh, car wash forecast, the next couple days are it, folks. Hot today, hot temperatures on Friday, and staying warm by Saturday, Sarah. I like the sound of that. Also thankful that we are not Phoenix 107. Ooh. All right. Well, it is 541 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News brings you team traffic all morning long, courtesy of News Talk KBOI. Everything is running smoothly this morning on all of our roads. So good news there. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Now it's time for our question of the day. The question is, if you're average, you'll eat this about 40 times this summer. All right, what are we thinking it is? My first thing that came to my mind was watermelon. I've already eaten it probably 10 times this yeah. summer. Uh, um, yeah, what yeah. about you? I'm going to say fruit. Uh, I, I love pineapple. Uh, oh, yes. So yeah, really just any fruit. Especially fresh pineapple. Nothing like a fresh fruit salad on a hot summer day, Sarah. Let's see. Eat 40 times this summer. Yeah, hot dogs. That was the next one in my mind, Jed. Yeah. Say firing up that grill, all of our favorites. I don't know. I'm, I'm more partial to hamburgers. Which one are you, Marcos? I'm um, uh, hamburgers. Yeah. Hamburgers. Okay. But a good. I mean, you know, who doesn't love hot dogs on a barbecue? I mean, you know? it's as long as it's barbecued. Again, so, we were talking about boiling hot dogs. Yes. None of that. We barbecue. don't want that here. All right, Joe, Joe says cotton candy. Cotton candy. Okay. Love cotton Fair's candy. Fair is coming up. The Western Idaho Fair. Yes. So good place to get that. Gary says watermelon. Good choice. Gary, Sarah, you agree with Gary there. Yep. So. Uh, um, also, just a, Costco has it for pretty cheap right now. If you are looking for a watermelon, just a little shout out there. But many different options. Yeah, all of your favorite summer foods. If you think you know the answer, none of these guesses doing it for you. You still have time. You can guess on our Facebook page and Twitter, of course. And we'll read the answer right before CBS this morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, bringing community together, both young and old. How a senior center is paying it forward. Here's a look at your local forecast in Mountain Home for today. Sunny conditions, a high of 94, clear skies by tonight, and that sunshine continuing tomorrow, high of 95. Pay it forward is sponsored by Mountain America Credit Union. This week's Pay It Forward, it goes to the Melba Valley Senior Center and its dynamic director, Michelle Martinez. Now she's not only guided the center through the pandemic, but she's also transformed it into a place of friendship and service for both young and old. Here's CBS 2's Brent Hunsaker. In rural Idaho, neighbors can be separated by acres of farmland. And for the elderly, some of whom have limited mobility or can no longer drive, the distance can seem insurmountable. That's why the Melba Valley Senior Center has become so vital to this community. It brings neighbors together. There's usually a hot lunch prepared in its kitchen. A game of billiards in the back room. I-28, G-56. He's not playing my numbers. And of course, bingo. Bingo! Oh, that, that was bingo. <laughs> Angie, would you come on over here? Angela Phillips tricked them into thinking she was just there for the bingo. I'm in trouble. Uh, <laughs> Angie's got something to say to you. So I heard it was a $500 buy-in for the bingo, and I gotta confess, I didn't pay yet. <laughs> we wanted to pay it forward to the Melba Senior Center. Inside this, I've got $500. Thank 
you. Yeah, I feel like you should get a hug for that. <laughs> the center is a gathering place where people laugh, talk, connect. Here, people know that others care about them. They're among friends. This place, they tell me, is a lifesaver. It means that I'm still alive. So if I didn't have it, and you just get old and sit at home and do nothing, you probably aren't going to be around. It helps to have a place to gather. Michelle Martinez is the director of the center and its irresistible force. And I love it. Like, it's the most, it's so much fun. This is summer lunches. The center also provides seniors with an opportunity to give back. Now, during the week, they take turns with other community groups putting together sack lunches. They hand out those lunches in a nearby park to kids who are out of school for the summer. Hello, how are you doing? And that's not all. A couple times a month, senior center volunteers, both young and old, Two. have a drive-up food distribution. <laughs> On this day, they've got boxes of strawberries and fresh vegetables from the Idaho Food Bank. Just lettuce, cauliflower, carrots. Have a good weekend. There can be as many as a hundred cars lined up for the food boxes. And it's not just for seniors. Michelle has expanded the role of the senior center, making it a community center where all are welcome and wanted. I'm glad that we can help. I'm glad that we can do something and just make everybody feel like this is our community and this is what we do. Hello, how are you guys doing? Age doesn't matter. And I think, you know, that's the biggest thing I hear is, I can't go to the senior center because I'm not old enough. What's, what's old? Like, what's age? Like, what? How many wrinkles do you have to have? How, what does that look like to you? You know, we just have the best time. And it's like, age doesn't matter. It's worth it. In a way, so, Michelle has become, by her own admission, yeah. something of a mom to people who are older than she is. Okay. Yes. And I don't know, I'm sure there's another word than mom for it. But, but that fits. But it fits, yeah. And so if they're older, who cares? Michelle tells me she's just paying it forward. This community loved us. They love my boys that were still at home. They love my boys that had moved out. They love my husband and I. They showed love a million different ways. If I can give back a tenth of that love, I've done right. Ah, oh, Brent does it again. I love such, that. Such good storytelling oh, for Brent. It's amazing what they do. And I love that it's, you know, the Melba Senior Center, but the combining of the young and old, and not only the old helping the young, the young helping the old, a, a true community center. Very, That's I mean, great to see. Yeah, great to see, you know, people give back and yeah. give back to the community. And it's good, good to live in the Treasure Valley, you know. Oh, yeah, it is. And also, um, one thing I was thinking while we were watching this, if um, you have not seen the Melba fireworks show yeah. ever, too, I know we're a little past 4th of July, the best fireworks show I've seen since living in the Treasure Valley yeah. was down in Melba. So. I'll have to check that out next year. Shout yeah. out to them. All right, well, let's switch gears, talk about the weather, because, of course, it's going to be another beautiful sunny day on tap. Marcos, tell me more. Yeah, uh, mid-90s for your high today. Uh, got that uh, high pressure in the area, right, Sarah? So uh, bringing those warmer temperatures. Um, we're going to be seeing some uh, possibility of some of those mountain showers in the north. But here in the valley, calm today. Uh, nice uh, mild start to your morning. Here's a live look downtown, 66 degrees. Nice uh, morning to start your commute. Uh, looking at current temperatures right now across the valley, 69 Caldwell, Meridian there, 69 as well. Mountain Home there at 64 and uh, out in Stanley there 44 as well. Nampa there at 70. So we are going to be warming up, folks. I'm going to take a look at this pollen count real quick. We are in a moderate uh, uh, place right now. Uh, the trees is a little high right now with the pollen count. If you struggle with allergies, I mean, I know I do. Uh, just make sure you're looking out for that. But uh, staying fairly dry for the most part here in the valley. We are going to see the chance of some uh, afternoon thunderstorms, uh, isolated showers in the mountain region. but. Uh, mostly to the north of us, West Central Mountains, all that good stuff. So here's what we could expect. Above normal temperatures, lots of sun this week, dry through the weekend and hitting triple digits next week. Here's a look at that extended forecast. 94 warmer for tomorrow, sunny throughout the weekend, uh, cooling down just a bit there on Sunday with a high of 90, 94 Monday and getting hotter by Tuesday. There's those triple digits, 100, 101. And taking a look at that extended mountain forecast, sunny for tomorrow, high of 81, cooling down there a bit on Sunday with a high of 79 and getting back up into the 80s by Tuesday and 90 by Wednesday. Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. It is 552 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News, News Talk KBY, bringing team traffic all morning long. 
few more headlights out there, but main roads, secondary roads are looking good. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News, the NHL coming to Boise when the Idaho Steelheads are facing off against teams from the National Hockey League. And here's a look at our photo chime in of the day from Independence Day, more Independence Day celebrations. Thank you guys so much for sharing this with us. To submit your photos, you can head to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 555 on your Thursday. Welcome back. CBS 2 is gathering the numbers on incidents over the holiday weekend. Eagles Fire Department responded to three fires that may have started by fireworks but they didn't receive any official complaints of illegal fireworks. In Boise, police responded to 63 reports of illegal fireworks. Still, that number, it's down about 60% over the last four years. Good news, there were no arrests or significant incidents at Monday's celebration in Ann Morrison Park. Boise Fire, though, was busy working with 15 water rescues. Well, looking ahead, the National Hockey League returning to Boise for one night and one night only. Now, the Idaho Steelheads are getting ready for an exhibition game between the Arizona Coyotes and the Vegas Golden Knights. It's October 8th at Idaho Central Arena. I don't think people realize how hard it is to get an NHL team to come to Boise because we're kind of out of the mix of their travel schemes and everything. So. It is a huge undertaking and we're so excited to have it and we think it's just going to be an unbelievable game. So we hope that everybody comes out October 8th. Yeah, expect some intense competition. It is the last preseason game for both teams. Now tickets, they go on sale to the public August 10th at 10 a.m. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, rally teachers in Idaho. The measure you may see on the November ballot after getting over 100,000 signatures. Plus, Patriot Thunder back on for this weekend after being delayed twice. What to prepare for as 1,000 motorcyclists head through town. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll be back with your top headlines in just a few minutes. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the suspect in the Illinois parade shooting makes his first court appearance. The new information investigators say they're uncovering about the tragedy and what they're still trying to figure out. Plus, could the shooting at an elementary school in Texas have been prevented? What one new report is now uncovering. And the Middleton police chief hands in his resignation. Why neighbors are having a tough time understanding the sudden situation. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this July 7th, 2022. It is Thursday or as we like to call it Friday Eve and we are sailing on into the weekend with some pretty toasty temperatures. Marcos, good morning. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, uh, high pressure com continuing to stay in our area. We are going to see mid 90s highs for today, so uh, make sure you're preparing for that, getting that sunscreen and staying hydrated. But this is our live shot right now, downtown 66. Calm winds out there, a nice uh, mild start to your morning commute. And taking a look at some current temperatures for right now, 66 here, Boise, 70 out in Nampa, and 62 for our friends out in McCall. Looking at the out the door forecast, we are going to be seeing Temperatures in the 60s this morning, uh, 70s by 9 a.m., 80 by 11 a.m., and 87 by 1 p.m. before we get into those 90s uh, heat by this afternoon. Here's a quick look at our almanac. A high of 91 normal for this time of year, but as I said, we're going to be getting into those mid-90s. And here's a quick look at uh, uh, our coffee needed for today, 94 degrees here in Boise. And 95 Boise for our highs today, 95 out in Nampa, 96 out there in Mountain Home. So it's going to be a warm day, Sarah. 
Looking forward to it though. Marcos, thank you. Make sure that air conditioning is ready to go today. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything looking good out there this morning. Just a reminder though, Franklin Road is closed for the on ramp as well as parts of the off ramp. So just keep that in mind. Other than that, smooth sailing when you do get in the car. Make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Authorities, they say the suspect in the mass shooting that killed seven at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois, confessed to the attack. Now, the weapon left behind helped police capture the suspect just hours later. Now, after the rampage, police say the shooter drove to Madison, Wisconsin and contemplated firing on an event there. Highland Park Police Chief Lou Jogman told CBS 2 News that investigators still they don't have a motive. We really don't have any better understanding today than we did uh, when we first started talking to him about the why in particular. The 21 year old appeared in court for the first time by video on Wednesday. He faces seven counts of first degree murder with dozens more charges expected. Now, if convicted, prosecutors say he could spend the rest of his life in prison. Well, officers in Richmond, Virginia say a similar scene. It could have played out there. They say two men had a cache of weapons inside a home. They were planning a mass shooting on Independence Day. However, that plot was thwarted thanks to a call from a concerned citizen who says they overheard the men. One phone call saved numerous lives on the 4th of July. And moving forward, we employ that everyone, if you see something, say something. Now, police seized two assault rifles, one handgun, and 223 rounds of ammunition. Both men are now charged with possession of those weapons. Also, weapons kept by an undocumented immigrant. Now, the Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented. That's the finding of a scorching new assessment from an active shooter training center. Now, the report, it doesn't name names, but the Uvalde mayor is doing just that. He's not blaming any one member of law enforcement for the botched response, but as Amy Kiley reports, he is accusing some of them of covering up the truth. I think it's a cover up. This scathing new report claims the Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented and these 19 elementary students and two teachers could still be alive. The Uvalde mayor accuses Texas Department of Public Safety Director Stephen McCraw of concealing the truth about the shooting. It's always hard when you tell a lie. You have to keep telling a lie. I'm not saying he's lying. Maybe he was misled. The new assessment is from an active shooter training center. It highlights three missed opportunities to prevent the tragedy. One, it suggests the school was lax about locking doors. Two, it says a school police officer drove too quickly through the parking lot to notice the gunman. Point three is the most striking. It says a Uvalde police officer who likely heard gunshots or reports of them saw the gunman before he entered the school. He asked permission to shoot, but didn't get a response in time. I was waiting for um, anybody, anybody to come save us. As for what happened inside the building, the report blames a lack of effective command. It says that contributed to the failure to stop the gunman in time. Nobody moved but me. The children were dead under the table. Yeah, my children. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Now, this report doesn't name McCraw, and McCraw himself has blamed the school district's police chief for failures around the shooting. The center does plan to issue a second part of its report. Now, that will assess the leadership behind the law enforcement response. Developing news here in the Gem State, the Middleton City Council accepted the resignation of their police chief, Alan Takuchi. Now, the mayor had already requested a city council meeting on dismissing the chief, but before that could happen, he handed in his resignation yesterday afternoon. Now, it's still unclear why the mayor wanted the chief out. A lot of the people in town uh, are uh, frustrated with the mayor, and a lot of most of the people in our community highly support the chief of police, all the police. Now, another oddity. The Middleton Police Department Facebook page, it's now gone. CBS2 did reach out to the mayor for comment, but all he would say is that he was sad to receive his resignation. Now, we also did reach out to the city council to find out what's next for the police department, but have yet to hear back. 
a measure that would increase taxes for the top 1% of Idahoans to fund Idaho grade schools. It's one step closer to the November ballot. The Quality Education Act, it would increase K-12 funding by about $323 million. Teachers, students, and other public education advocates, they handed in over 100,000 signatures to the Secretary of State's office yesterday. Now, the Idaho State Board of Education says they're in an unprecedented teaching hiring crisis with roughly 700 unfilled public K-12 through teaching positions going into the next school year. A lot of districts aren't even getting applications because we're not paying competitive salaries. What is going to happen? Are they going to put 50 kids in a classroom? I don't know. Idaho ranks dead last when it comes to a public perk child in public K through 12 schools. Now, the Idaho Secretary of State has 10 days to certify these signatures before the initiative can be placed on the November ballot. Well, the Idaho Patriot Thunder Ride will be rolling through the Treasure Valley on Sunday. Organizers, they did have to postpone the event two times last month due to unsettled weather. Just a heads up, about a thousand motorcyclists will be participating in the event, so you can expect some traffic restrictions on Sunday. The ride, it'll begin at Harley, High Harley, or High Desert, pardon me, Harley Davidson on Cinema Drive on to Overland, then to Eagle Road. Then drivers will head eastbound on I-84 down to Mountain Home. Officers will escort riders, so again, expect delays. Well, if you're in need of some assistance, the Boise Salvation Ar Army is offering fresh produce on Friday tomorrow. They say seniors in need are especially welcome. Now, they've heard how hard it is with the high prices of foods and some of seniors living on a fixed income having to choose between medications or buying groceries. Now, it'll be held at 9492 Emerald Street. That's in Boise from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pre-registration for the produce market that is required. You can sign up through today at 4 o'clock p.m. Helping everybody out. All right, Marcos, one thing I'm looking forward to is floating the Boise River. I know temperatures mid 90s today is what you were saying. Mid 90s today, Sarah. Good, a great day to go float the river. You know, go go out for a walk on the green belt. Uh, go for a hike, maybe even, or maybe not. I mean, depending on what you think is. Yeah, the earlier, uh, a little bit yeah. in the earlier mornings. Yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful time to hike, or even I guess a little bit later. By then, we're asleep, obviously. Yes, but yeah, but yeah. if you are, you know, a night owl, yeah, it's a great a no, great opportunity. A great day to get out. Uh, you know, wear that sunscreen, stay hydrated. Um, but yeah, mid 90s. Uh, staying warm throughout the rest of the weekend and uh, a little uh, cool down on the weekend, but getting into those triple digits next week, Sarah. Here's a look outside our mountains, our mountain region, beautiful pictures, photos right there, live shots. Uh, we are going to see some potential uh, showers and thunderstorms in those areas over the next couple of nights, but here in the valley, staying fairly dry and as I said warm here's a look at some of our current temperatures right now 70 out Napa 67 there in Caldwell uh, Meridian there at 69 and looking out at the uh, rest of the region 61 there Glens Ferry Sun Valley there at 53 and uh, 42 in Stanley so we haven't seen that low in a while here so taking a look at that starting the day forecast nice mild conditions this morning temperatures in the 60s warming up into the 80s uh, and if, uh, with by around 11 a.m. but overall a nice uh, mild start to your day. Looking at our temperature trend, staying in the mid 60s throughout the weekend. Sunday there we get a nice little break 91 before we warm up into the mid 90s by Monday and triple digits by next week. So here's a look at some of those forecast highs across uh, the country. 100s there, Salt Lake, Las Vegas there 103 and Phoenix 108. So taking a look at our car wash forecast, a good day, hot today to wash your car. Hot temperatures for tomorrow and Saturday, warm temperatures. So it's going to be a good couple days to get out. Enjoy that Idaho sunshine, Sarah. Thank you, Marco. 610 on your Thursday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, good morning. Good morning. Not much happening. It is very quiet. We did have uh, crews respond to a uh, brush fire reported. Highway 16, about two miles south of Firebird Raceway, around 530. They have since uh, all cleared, so that turned out to uh, not be an issue. Thank goodness. Uh, traffic on I-84 on the light side. Everything quiet. Doing just fine. Even other non-freeway routes are good. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, Britain's Prime Minister resigning. Why the country's leader is calling it quits. 
Plus, gas prices is going down. What state is finally seeing some relief that could signal good things to come for the rest of the country? Now it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. According to a relationship expert, doing this will improve your friendships. Definitely not what we expected, Marcos. The answer, moving away. Yeah, distance making that heart grow fonder. Now for today's question, if you're average, you'll eat this about 40 times this summer. Okay, folks, thinking caps on, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your local forecast in Gooding for today. Sunny with a high of 93. Tonight, mostly clear conditions with a high of 60. And tomorrow, that sunshine will be sticking around with a high of 95. Thank you, Marcos. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is agreeing to resign, ending an unprecedented stalemate. Now, Johnson was pushing against calls by his cabinet to step down in wake of several ethics scandals. However, after more than 40 members of the government resigned yesterday, he has agreed to leave. Today, I ask him to do the honorable thing, to put the interests of the nation before his yeah. own interests. He will continue to serve as the prime minister through autumn, according to the report. Johnson's Conservative Party plans to have a new leader in place by the party's October conference. That's according to the BBC. Turning now to the war in Ukraine, Ukrainian officials in parts of the Donbas region, they're urging residents to evacuate as Russia is continuing its attacks. Ukrainian officials say people in the Donetsk region, one of the two regions that makes up the Donbas, should evacuate to safer locations. Officials say Russia's invasion has turned the region into a dangerous hotspot. Ukraine says it still controls about 45 percent of the Donetsk region. The Federal Reserve is signaling more interest rate hikes on the horizon. Minutes from the Fed's mid-June meeting indicating significantly higher rates could be needed to rein in spiraling inflation. Now, at the same time, the central bank did acknowledge that price hikes could weaken the economy. After last month's meeting, the Fed raised its key rate by three quarters of a percentage point. That was the single biggest increase in almost three decades. Well, in the meantime, gas prices are continuing their downward trend. For the first time in a long time, gas prices now going down in California. The state had the highest average across the U.S., but this morning they're trending down about 10 cents from a week ago, sitting at 6.19 a gallon. Of course, for many, that's still too much. You shouldn't have to be at the gas pump questioning your life decisions. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to put $20 in or are you going to be able to get lunch? The hope is the downward trend will continue. Now, according to a spokesperson for Gas Buddy, as long as oil prices don't reverse back up, it could continue the trend for another two to three more weeks. Well, here in Idaho, we aren't seeing much movement. Gas still sitting at 524 a gallon, down just one single cent from a week ago. Still, we're about 49 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up, that will be Costco. You can find it in Meridian, Nampa, and Boise for 515 a gallon. Uh, all right, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the weather because... Better news, right? Better news, yeah. brighter news, if yeah. you will. Yeah, no, it's already looking pretty sunny out there to kick off your morning. A beautiful start. I know that we're looking at sunshine straight on into the weekend, Marcos. Yeah, lots of sunshine, Sarah. I mean, temperatures are going to be in the mid-90s for the next couple days. So uh, we're going to be taking, get going, getting back to that nice summer uh, temperatures that we see here every summer. Here's a live shot right now. Beautiful start, beautiful sunrise to your Thursday morning, 66 degrees. Winds are calm out there. That dew point making it feel like 66 degrees out there. And taking a look at some current temperatures right now across the valley, 70 out in Nampa, Meridian there, 69, Caldwell, 66. And looking across the state, across the regions, 42 in Stanley, Sun Valley there at uh, 52 degrees, and Baker City there at 56. Taking a look at that pollen count, we are seeing moderate, moderate amount of pollen in the uh, trees, the weed, the grass, a little bit of uh, high amounts there with the trees. Looking at our satellite and for, uh, radar for this afternoon, we may see some precipitation, thunderstorms, uh, showers in the mountain region over the next couple days. But here in the valley, staying fairly dry, here's what we could expect. Above normal temperatures, lots of sun this week, 
dry through the weekend and hitting 100 degrees next week, folks. Those triple digits will be coming in 94 warmer for tomorrow for your extended forecast. 93 Saturday, lots of sunshine this weekend, folks. 90 there on Sunday and those triple digits on Tuesday, 101 on Wednesday. Here's a quick look at your mountain forecast. 80s throughout the weekend. That sunshine sticking around, getting it back into higher 84 for Monday, 85 on Tuesday. And that uh, mountain region also warming up on Wednesday with a high of 91. Sarah. Thank, thank you, Marcos. It is 619 on your Thursday. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hey, Ron, how's it looking? So far, we're doing okay with the drive. I-84, uh, not much kicking in quite yet. Still a little too early for a main flow of morning volume on I-84 eastbound uh, through the Meridian area at 10 Mile Meridian Road, for example. And looking back in the construction zone, that's quiet too. Caldwell, Nampa, I-84. And even the construction area, Highway 44, in that area between Highway 16 and Linder. Down to one lane each direction, 45 miles per hour for the speed limit. Use some caution there. No buildups right now. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure to turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, Idaho seeing its first case of monkeypox. Where the case comes from and what doctors say you need to know. Plus, St. Alphonse is offering the COVID vaccine for kids as young as six months. Why experts say it's important to keep your kiddos vaccinated. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 623 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Idaho may have its first case of monkeypox. The Idaho Department of Health and Welfare is looking into the first probable case. They say the person lives in the Central District Health Area, which serves Ada, Boise, Elmore and Valley counties. Officials, they believe the person got infected while traveling to a country experiencing an outbreak. Uh, we don't think right now that we have uh, an outbreak, but we are certainly uh, trying very hard to make sure this doesn't spread and that any other cases that might be in the state get quickly tested and treated. Now, monkeypox, it usually causes mild illness and most people do recover on their own. It is, however, highly contagious and spreads mostly through direct contact with infectious scabs, sores or body fluids. Now, symptoms, they do include a rash, swollen lymph nodes and flu-like symptoms. Health officials say you can do some things to help prevent infection, like washing your hands, limiting direct contact with anyone who does have a new rash, and staying home and isolating if you do develop a new rash. Now, over 6,000 cases of monkeypox have been reported outside of Africa. That's where this began. Now, this includes 560 cases in the U.S. None of them have died. Well, switching gears, St. Alphonse is offering COVID vaccines for kids aged six months to five years. Now, the FDA and the CDC both unanimously say that the benefits outweigh the risks of vaccinating. Community levels are high in several Idaho counties. That does include Ada County. Doctors say one of the ways to stop the spread is to keep up on your vaccinations and to get your kids vaccinated. I like to reassure them that the uh, way that this vaccine works is the same way that it has worked for the school age kids and the teenagers and the adults. So it's not like we're reinventing and giving the children, the infants, a brand new type of vaccine. It's the same one with just a smaller dose. You can get the vaccine for those six months to five years at Boise's Pediatric and the Pediatric Centers on Garrity and Elm. Now, if you want to make an appointment, we do have a link on IdahoNews.com. A new study shows a drop in mammograms and other breast cancer care still remaining below pre-COVID levels. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares why that's raising new concerns. Hey there, everybody. A recent review of breast cancer care in COVID-19 shows that delays in screening, diagnosis, and treatment could have a big impact on a patient's future if we don't turn some of these trends around. With all of that shut down, a lot of people 
canceled and even didn't get their mammograms later on when we reopened our services. Dr. Jennifer Manders is a breast surgeon at Ohio's Christ Hospital Health Network. She says her team already seeing the impact of what the breast cancer review also shows. People who may have had what's called a screen detected breast cancer now came in with more locally advanced disease. It's all because according to the American College of Radiology, mammography and breast cancer care related to it has not yet rebounded or bounced back from the COVID-19 pandemic. This research team estimated it's only at about 85% of what it was pre-pandemic. Dr. Manders and the team here told me what that really translates to right now is that many women didn't come in at all for breast cancer screening in the pandemic, and often it's cancer symptoms or other concerns bringing them in now. It's pretty common for us to see women who had their last mammogram in 2019. The other finding in this review is that breast cancer diagnosis dropped by nearly 50% in the peak pandemic period, and that has not rebounded either. That's raising new concerns that a lot of new cancers have yet to be diagnosed. One of the things to note is if you can get your initial screening done, follow-up consults can still be done virtually, and that can help with scheduling and quick turnaround. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News, rallying for teachers in the Gem State, the measure you may see on the November ballot after getting close to 100,000 signatures. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the suspect in the Illinois parade shooting makes his first court appearance. The new information investigators say they've uncovered about the tragedy and what they're still trying to figure out. Plus, could the shooting at an elementary school in Texas have been prevented? What one new report is now uncovering. And the Middleton police chief hands in his resignation. Why neighbors are having a tough time understanding the sudden situation. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. And good morning. Happy Thursday. We're going to be seeing that high pressure continue to stick around in our area. Here's a live look downtown. A nice, calm, mild start to your morning. 66 degrees, looking at uh, calm winds and looking at some other temperatures across the valley right now. 70 there in Nampa. Mountain home there at 62. And we're going to be getting into the 90s by this afternoon. I'm going to show you. Here's our out the door forecast real quickly. 73 by 9 a.m., 80 by 11 a.m., climbing into the 90s by 3 p.m. before we get into 94 by 7 p.m. this afternoon. Here's a look at our almanac for this time of year, 91 degrees, a low of 60, so we'll be about a couple degrees warmer than normal. Here's a look at some high temperatures for today, 96 there, Mountain Home, Idaho City there, 90, Stanley there at 81, and McCall there at 82. So nice uh, mid-90 temperatures, Emmett there, 97, 95 here in Boise. It's going to be a warm day, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Marcos. Find a way to stay cool. That's the name of the game. It is 631 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. Everything looking good out there this morning. So let's move on with the show. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Authorities, they say the suspect in the mass shooting that killed seven at the 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois, has confessed to the attack. Now, the weapon left behind helped police capture the suspect just hours later. After the rampage, police say the shooter drove to Madison, Wisconsin, and contemplated firing on an event there. Highland Park Police Chief Lou Jogman told CBS 2 News that investigators still don't have a motive. We really don't have any better understanding today than we did uh, when we first started talking to him about the why in particular. The 21 year old appeared in court for the first time by video yesterday. He faces seven counts of first degree murder with dozens more charges expected. Now, if convicted, prosecutors say he could spend the rest of his life in prison. Officers in Richmond, Virginia say similar scene could have played out there. They say two men had a cache of weapons inside a home and were planning a mass shooting on Independence Day. However, that plot was thwarted thanks to a call from a concerned citizen who says they overheard the men. One phone call saved numerous lives on the 4th of July. And moving forward, we employed that everyone, if you see something, say something. 
Now police seized two assault rifles, one handgun and 223 rounds of ammunition. You can see some of those guns there. Now both men are charged with possession of weapons by undocumented immigrants. Well, in Texas, the Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented. That's the finding of a scorching new assessment from an active shooter training center. Now, this report doesn't name names, but the Uvalde mayor is doing just that. He's not blaming any one member of law enforcement for the botched response. But as Amy Kiley reports, he is accusing someone of covering up the truth. I think it's a cover up. This scathing new report claims the Uvalde school shooting could have been prevented and these 19 elementary students and two teachers could still be alive. The Uvalde mayor accuses Texas Department of Public Safety Director Stephen McCraw of concealing the truth about the shooting. It's always hard when you tell a lie, you have to keep telling a lie. I'm not saying he's lying, maybe he was misled. The new assessment is from an active shooter training center. It highlights three missed opportunities to prevent the tragedy. One, it suggests the school was lax about locking doors. Two, it says a school police officer drove too quickly through the parking lot to notice the gunman. Point three is the most striking. It says a Uvalde police officer who likely heard gunshots or reports of them saw the gunman before he entered the school. He asked permission to shoot but didn't get a response in time. I was waiting for um, anybody, anybody to come save us. As for what happened inside the building, the report blames a lack of effective command. It says that contributed to the failure to stop the gunman in time. Nobody moved but me. The children were dead under the table. Yeah, my children. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Now, the report doesn't specifically name McCraw, but McCraw himself has blamed the school district police chief for failures around the shooting. The center does plan to issue a second part of their report that will assess the leadership behind the law enforcement response. Well, developing news here in the Gem State, the Middleton City Council accepted the resignation of Police Chief Alan Takuchi. The mayor had already requested a city council meeting on dismissing the chief, but before that could happen, he handed in his resignation yesterday afternoon. Now, it's still unclear why the mayor wanted the chief out. A lot of the people in town uh, are uh, frustrated with the mayor, and a lot of most of the people in our community highly support the chief of police, all the police. Another oddity, the Middleton Police Department Facebook page, it's now gone. CBS2 did reach out to the mayor for comment, but all he would say is that he was, quote, sad to receive his resignation. Now, we did also reach out to the city council to find out what's next for the police department, but have yet to hear back this morning. A measure that would increase taxes for the top 1% of Idahoans to fund Idaho grade schools, it's one step closer to the November ballot. The Quality Education Act would increase K-12 through funding by about $323 million. Teachers, students, and other public education advocates, they handed over 100,000 signatures to the Secretary of State's office yesterday. The State of Board of Education says they're in an unprecedented teacher hiring crisis with, get this, Roughly 700 unfilled public K through 12 teaching positions going into our next school year. A lot of districts aren't even getting applications because we're not paying competitive salaries. What is going to happen? Are they going to put 50 kids in a classroom? I don't know. Well, Idaho, it ranks dead last when it comes to funding per child in public K through 12 schools. The Idaho Secretary of State now has 10 days to certify those signatures before the initiative can be placed on the November ballot. Well, looking ahead, the Idaho Patriot Thunder Ride, it'll be rolling through the Treasure Valley on Sunday. Organizers, they had to postpone the event two times last month due to unsettled weather. And just a heads up, about a thousand motorcyclists are expected to participate. You'll hear them before you see them, but it does mean you can expect some traffic restrictions on Sunday. The ride, it begins at High Desert Harley Davidson. That's on Cinema Drive. They head to Overland Road, then Eagle Road, then riders head eastbound on I-84 to Mountain Home. Officers will escort the riders, so of course expect delays. If you're in need of some assistance, the Boise Salvation Army, they're offering their fresh Friday produce market. It's tomorrow. They say seniors are especially welcome. 
Now they've heard how hard it is with high food prices and our seniors, of course, living on a fixed income. Some are having to choose between their medications and buying groceries. Now it will be held at 9492 Emerald Street. That's in Boise from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pre-registration for the produce market that is required. Now clients can sign up through Thursday. Again, that's 4 p.m. today. Such a good so nice to see those things happening in our community, right, Sarah? Yeah, I mean, it's great to see. Yeah. I mean, I know that it's summertime. It's kind of, you know, those times when people feel a little bit more uplifted. Yeah. But but with, you know, kind of some of these challenges economically that we're having, you, you want to be able to help everybody out. So thankful they Especially can do our that. our seniors. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So along with maybe getting some fresh produce tomorrow, lots of sunshine is in store. But make sure you wear sunscreen. Um, the UV yes. levels are very high right now. Yes. Again, just keep that in mind. Don't, um, I learned that the hard way. So yeah, I mean, get that. <laughs> sunscreen ready uh, stay hydrated yep. drink your water uh, it's oh, gonna be a, a warm couple days Sarah. yeah so. yeah and also um, as we as we're talking about you know the elderly make sure you're checking on any neighbors yes. you have yeah. uh, just to make sure their air conditioning you know is serviced and ready to go as we very, get into these hotter temperatures very good point yeah, yeah. very but yeah stay hydrated uh, sunscreen we are gonna be getting into the uh, mid 90s for today and into tomorrow we are gonna st stay in the 90s throughout the weekend but uh, overall that warming trend is going to continue, folks. Here's a live look right now. Beautiful Idaho mountains. There's Bogus, Sun Valley, uh, McCall. And we actually, we're going to have a system come through the area over the next couple of afternoons, bringing some isolated rain, thunderstorms to those areas. But here in the valley, a whole other situation. We're going to be staying fairly dry throughout the next couple of days. Here's some current temperatures right now. 64 Caldwell, 68 out there in Meridian. Uh, pretty nice at mild temperatures for this morning. Glens Ferry there at 63, Nampa 70, Stanley there at 42. And looking at the starting your day forecast, nice mild conditions for the morning. Temperatures are going to be in the 60s this morning as you start your day. You're getting ready for your commute and looking at our temperature trend right there. Mid 90s through Saturday, a nice uh, dip there on Sunday and getting back into those uh, upper 90s, mid 90s by Monday. We are going to be seeing triple digits. Here's a look at some of those forecast highs across the country. 103 there, Vegas, uh, 77 there, Portland and 108 down in Phoenix. So. Uh, if you plan on uh, washing your car today, doing some outdoor activities, um, good day for that. It's going to be hot today, hot temperatures on Friday and warm on Saturday, but nothing a nice uh, uh, float on the river or uh, some water can can't fix there, all right? Yeah, there's nothing water can't fix. Isn't that the truth? All right, 640 on your Thursday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY bring you team traffic all morning long. A sunny view out there, but let's get a check of what's happening from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. It's uh, very quiet in general. We've had a little bit of congested traffic try to show up at uh, Meridian Road. Of course, that can happen now and then, depending on how much volume is coming onto the freeway. But full commute is not uh, in gear quite yet. Highway 2026, just starting to see a little more volume in uh, the area around Middleton Road. That will probably get worse. Getting ready to get out the door. Don't forget Highway 44. The buildups will probably develop here after a while, too, in that area near Highway 16. From the uh, News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Ron, when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question is, if you're average, you'll eat this about 40 times this summer. Okay, Marcos, what do we think it is? I'm sticking with fruit. You know, nothing like a nice uh, fruit salad for the summer, but um, I don't know. What, what do you think? See, okay, earlier we talked about this. Um, I've already eaten watermelon probably about 10 times, so that's what I have to say it yeah. is. Um, but that's kind of the one thing in during the summertime, all of those I mean, fresh fruits. I know that we're grilling. We finally got yeah. the grill up and running for the summer. A little late, guys, I know. The only other thing I could think of is is hamburgers and hot dogs. Yeah, no, so. we could, I think I could beat 40, to be honest, for an entire <laughs> summer. All right, Kenna says corn on the cob. Yeah, that's a summer favorite. Oh, yeah, one of my favorites. Corn. But you got to have those little holders um, on yes. the side so you know, you're not really holding the cob. Get your yes. hands all greasy. Lisa, Lisa says uh, cherries, you know, uh, Good, uh, I think cherry season is right around the corner, oh, right? Is I cannot wait. Love, um, love cherries. We did have Cherry Fest. It was about a week ago, I believe, a couple of weeks ago up in Emmett. But a great time. I love when you get to see all of those fruit stands opening up with all the fresh so cherries good. around town. 
Yeah, Verlin says a hamburger. I'm above average. Yeah. Me too, Verlin. <laughs> we agree, Verlin. <laughs> we are apparently beef eaters on this morning show. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, you still have about 15 minutes. You can guess on our Facebook page as well as Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, bringing community together, both young and old. How a senior center in Melba is paying it forward. Here's a look at your local forecast in Mountain Home for today. Sunny conditions, a high of 94, and then clear conditions for tonight with a high of 62, and that sunshine sticking around for tomorrow, a high of 95. Pay It Forward is sponsored by Mountain America Credit Union. This week's Pay It Forward, it goes to the Melba Valley Senior Center and its dynamic director, Michelle Martinez. Now, she not only guided the center through the pandemic, but also transformed it into a place of friendship and service for both young and old. Here's CBS 2's Brent Hunsaker. In rural Idaho, neighbors can be separated by acres of farmland. And for the elderly, some of whom have limited mobility or can no longer drive, the distance can seem insurmountable. That's why the Melba Valley Senior Center has become so vital to this community. It brings neighbors together. There's usually a hot lunch prepared in its kitchen, a game of billiards in the back room. I-28, G-56. He's not playing my numbers. And of course, bingo. Bingo! Oh, that, that was bingo. <laughs> Angie, would you come on over here? Angela Phillips tricked them into thinking she was just there for the bingo. I'm in trouble. Angie's got something to say to you. So I heard it was a $500 buy-in for the bingo. And I got to confess, I didn't pay yet. <laughs> we wanted to pay it forward to the Melba Senior Center. Inside this, I've got $500. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like you should get a hug for that. The center is a gathering place where people laugh, talk, connect. Here, people know that others care about them. They're among friends. This place, they tell me, is a lifesaver. It means that I'm still alive. So if I didn't have it, and you just get old and sit at home and do nothing, you probably aren't going to be around. It helps to have a place to gather. Michelle Martinez is the director of the center and its irresistible force. And I love it. Like, it's the most... It's so much fun. This is summer lunches. The center also provides seniors with an opportunity to give back. Now, during the week, they take turns with other community groups, putting together sack lunches. They hand out those lunches in a nearby park to kids who are out of school for the summer. Hello, how are you doing? And that's not all. A couple times a month, senior center volunteers, both young and old, have a drive-up food distribution. On this day, they've got boxes of strawberries and fresh vegetables from the Idaho Food Bank. Just lettuce, cauliflower, carrots. Have a good weekend. There can be as many as a hundred cars lined up for the food boxes. And it's not just for seniors. Michelle has expanded the role of the senior center, making it a community center where all are welcome and wanted. I'm glad that we can help. I'm glad that we can do something and just make everybody feel like this is our community and this is what we do. Hello, how are you guys doing? Age doesn't matter. And I think, you know, that's the biggest thing I hear is, I can't go to the senior center because I'm not old enough. What's, what's old? Like, what's age? Like, what? How many wrinkles do you have to have? How, what does that look like to you? You know, we just have the best time. And it's like, age doesn't matter. It's worth it. In a way, Michelle has become, by her own admission, something of a mom to people who are older than she is. Okay. Yes. And I don't know, I'm sure there's another word than mom for it. But, but that fits. But it fits, yeah. And so if they're older, who cares? Michelle tells me she's just paying it forward. This community loved us. They loved my boys that were still at home. 
They love my boys that had moved out. They love my husband and I. They showed love a million different ways. If I can give back a tenth of that love, I've done right. Well said. Love that. Congratulations to Michelle Martinez and, of course, the Melba Senior Center. And I don't know if we can even call it the Melba Senior Center because it's, it's a community center. I mean, yeah. the being able to ha teach those, you know, those older people that service to young and those young kids the service to their, you know, their elders, yeah. it's a great thing. Love Such to see a nice, that. I mean, so, so it warms my heart to know that that's going on. Yeah. yeah I mean. well, okay, well, let's talk, obviously, about the weather because sunny skies moving on in. We're kind of warming incrementally, which yeah. we like to see. But by the weekend, that's really my main concern. How's it looking? Yeah, I mean, we'll be staying in the 90s through the weekend as well. Uh, a little warmer for today and tomorrow, but uh, overall highs in the 90s, that high pressure uh, sticking around, bringing those warmer temperatures, hotter temperatures to the valley. Uh, this is a uh, live shot right now. Beautiful, nice mild start to your morning. 66 degrees, calm winds out there. Feels uh, that dew point making it feel like 66. And looking at some current temperatures across the valley 70 out in Nampa, uh, 64 out in Caldwell, Meridian there at 67. And looking across the state right now, 42 Stanley, Caldwell there 64, and Glens Ferry there at 61 degrees. Looking at our pollen count, we're pretty moderate right now, uh, a little bit with the trees in the upper, uh, little moderate and higher risk there. But satellite and radar for the next couple days, we are going to see some. Some, uh, showers in the mountain region throughout the next couple days, uh, but overall for staying fairly dry here in the valley. So here's what we could expect above normal temperatures, sun this week, dry through the weekend and those triple digits next week. Here's a look at uh, warmer for tomorrow, 94 sunshine sticking around for the weekend and then those triple digits kicking in on Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Some good Idaho heat there. 81 in the mountains, sunny for the weekend and warming back up into the 80s and 90s by next week, Sarah. Oh, those triple digits. I knew they were going to come up eventually. All right, well, let's take a look outside CBS 2 News and News Talk KVOI, bringing team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, good morning. How's it looking? Well, traffic on the increase a little bit. We're getting uh, congested traffic now and then near the Garrity Merge. That's been showing up. Uh, not bad near 10 Mile overall, a little bit near Meridian Road. Other routes, too, starting to kick in. Some of those buildups, Highway 2026 at Middleton Road, starting to stack up pretty consistently of a good half mile anyway when the light's red. And even the buildup 2026 now and then in at Star Road, yet to get much of a buildup. 44, Highway 44, the construction zone, Highway 16 towards Linder, but that may change up later on, too once you uh, get ready to get out the door in the 7 o'clock hour. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. No, thank you, Ron. Good things to note this morning as you're heading out the door. And when you do head out the door, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, the NHL coming to Boise when teams from the National Hockey League are facing off at the Idaho Central Arena. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 6.55 on your Thursday. Welcome back and looking ahead, the National Hockey League returning to Boise for one night and one night only. The Idaho Steelheads are getting ready for an exhibition game between the Arizona Coyotes and the Vegas Golden Knights. It's on October 8th at the Idaho Central Arena. It's the last preseason game for both teams, so expect some intense competition. Now tickets, they go on sale to the public August 10th. Again, that is August 10th at 10 a.m. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is, if you're average, you'll eat this about 40 times during the summer. Marcos, the answer? Ice cream. We didn't even think of that one. <laughs> okay, guys, one. <laughs> stay cool today. Maybe get an ice cream cone. All right, we'll see yes. you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.
CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect